Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Jeff the IT Guy. Today we're going to do our review of the Dell G5 um, <clears throat> gaming laptop. So I did an unboxing of this the other day, it's been about four or five days. I've been working with it and testing it, running it um, with some games, putting it through its paces. And today we're going to have the full review. Um, there's going to be a lot of graphs and charts. Uh, I ran it through... I can't remember how many games I'd have to count. Um, it was more than five and less than 10. So should be a pretty good indication of how well it games. Um, and we're gonna talk about my thoughts about it. And so first we're gonna talk about the pros with this thing before we get into the graphs. So the pros with this is it is beautiful. Like this is a, a, a gorgeous laptop, the special edition. This is uh, the G5 15 5590. Um, the fans just kicked on on it, so you might hear that. It is beautiful. Um, it's not super heavy. It's it's lighter than the previous iteration of the G5. Um, it's not the black color. It's the white, which indicates the special edition. Um, so it's beautiful to start out with. It is it is well made. Um, it's not a tank like an Alienware. It's not going to be as well made as an Alienware or something like a Razer Blade 15 or 17 Pro. Um, but it is made well. It looks sleek. Um, the, the monitor does, you know, the screen on it does have a little bit of flex in it. It's not as rigid as what I would hope. Um, the bottom side of it isn't bad. It's pretty rigid. The keyboard on this thing is killer. Um, it does have a numpad. I wish they would have forgone that and went with larger keys. Um, I have big hands, and so having those larger keys would have helped me out. But it does type very well. Um, it does have good response. I think the keyboard is a real winner on this. Um, the screen looks great when you're playing games. It's 144 hertz, uh, 1080p, and it, it does. It looks really good. It's a step up from the older screens that were on the previous iterations, um, which this is more expensive um, than the previous iteration. So all in all, I think for this system, it's about $1,600. Uh, which isn't cheap um you know at that you're getting into the entry level uh stuff with alienware um but you know for dell's kind of flagship not being alienware this is it's not bad i mean it's middle of the road it's not the g7 but um very nice i will say that and so some of the cons like i said the flex with the screen and uh, this thermal solution on this uh isn't that great it gets extremely hot extremely quick and it gets loud, very, very loud. Um, Dell's got to work on their thermal solutions across the board with their, their gaming series and their Alienware laptops. Um, this thing is, like I said, it's extremely loud. Now it does have a full bore 2060 in it. Um, my Razer Blade 15 has a 2060 Max-Q. Um, it's thinner, but it does seem to cool a little bit better. Um, so Dell definitely needs to work on the, the thermal solution for these. And um, so we're going to cut into the graphs, and then we'll come back for the conclusion. As we can see in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we do actually pretty well. Um, without the cooler, we see a high of 100, a low of 67, and an average of 84. With the laptop cooler, we see a high of 110, a low of 70, and an average of 90. Um, our temps without the cooler and with the cooler, um, it's going to hit 99 and throttle um, just about every time. Uh, the fans are going to ramp up and get extremely loud. However, uh, the average didn't change either with the cooler. And so what happens is it gets a little bit more headroom and so it, it keeps the boost and it goes to 4 gigahertz on the CPU. And so you keep that boost the entire time. Now, whenever we go over to WoW Retail, these settings are cranked. Um, without the cooler, we see a high of 100, a low of 57, and an average of 74. Um, with the cooler, the high is the same. Our low then goes up to 67, and our average is 85. Um, this is just questing in Zoltazar, so it's nothing uh, in a raid or anything. You would definitely have to crank these settings down uh, in a raid, which you can do through the UI and every or through the settings and everything. The temperatures weren't bad. The high hit 78, 
and the average was between 71 and 73 and that is with and without the cooler next we have <clears throat> borderlands 3 this is high settings um without the cooler you see a high of 73 a low of 57 and an average of 65 with the cooler you got 80 65 and 70. Um, the temps without the cooler it hit 99 with an average of 78 and with the cooler it hit a high of 91 and an average of 75 and this was just uh, roaming around whenever you get into gunfights though if there's a lot of mobs and there's a lot of particle effects going off it's going to drop even further uh, than what it is here overwatch i threw this in because it's it's popular uh, it's a good title to really flex the system and show that it can put up high numbers and that the high refresh rate screen is going to come in handy. And so without a cooler, you got a high of 147, a low of 135, and an average of 143, which is very respectable. With the cooler, a high of 156, low of 145, and an average of 150. So you're definitely taking advantage of the 144 hertz screen uh, whenever you use the laptop cooler. Um, both times, the temps went to 99 for the highs, but the average was about a 5 degree difference. Next, we have Fortnite. And on this, um, it was all the time above 70. And so you can see here that with the cooler, uh, the laptop cooler, the highs and lows and averages were all higher. However, um, when it comes to the temps, you can really see that the temps on the high dropped by about 7 degrees. Uh, and the averages dropped by about 7 as well. So that's pretty good. Next we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Um, for this one, this is just a killer. This is on epic settings. You can see the highs uh, for the FPS are at 99. The lows both times were 48 and the average was 73. The cooler did not make a difference. It was absolutely destroying the system and the cooler had no bearing on it whatsoever. So as you've seen in the charts, this G5 can put out some frames, right? So it, it can really gain and it does it really well. And in some titles, you're able to take advantage of that 144 hertz screen. Now I didn't test anything like uh, League of Legends or WoW Classic, um, or anything like that, because I knew that this machine would, would pummel those. Right? I knew that in League of Legends, it was going to be completely possible to play the high settings at 144 hertz and take advantage of that screen. I knew that going into this. So I chose games on purpose. The games that I chose were to really push it and test it to its limit. I mean, put it to its test, you know, test its limits. You know, things like, the, things like Modern Warfare. With crank settings. Um, I did WoW retail at crank settings. Um, I mean, everything. It was at 10, turned, in, turned on all the, the alias and, and everything, all the post-processing, just cranked it to the nines. Um, Borderlands 3, which I was actually quite shocked by with the results. I figured it would have done better in it, but it didn't. I mean, Borderlands, when you start shooting and go, you got stuff going on with all the particles and stuff, it destroys it. Um... Fortnite, you know, it, it did well. Uh, you know, it was consistently over 70 for the most part, sometimes in the 80s and 90s. And it looked great, and it was on like epic settings. I mean, it, it did well. It played well. Um, Jedi Fallen Order uh, destroyed it. Um, yeah, you could hit that 60 hertz, but there was a lot of times playing that game that you were dipping into the 40s and 30s um, when you were transitioning and things you would see some massive frame drops. And as you looked at the temperatures as well, you could see that the temperatures were just astronomical. Um, you know. So in conclusion, is it a great gaming laptop? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good great. It's a pretty good gaming laptop. Is it worth $1,600? Not really. I don't think it is. I think you could get something better from Asus, MSI, um, Alienware, or... Uh, if you can catch a razor blade on sale that would be a better one as well so it's not worth that much money unless you like the looks of it unless you like Dell customer support and so when you start taking those things into consideration 
and to the fact that Dell will repair it and repair it and repair it for however long you have it, um, their warranty thrill, then maybe it's a good bargain for you. Uh, it, like I said, it tops well. Um, the, the keyboard's great, screen's great. It's really good, except for it's not a desktop replacement and you're not going to want to keep it on your lap and try and play games. Um, while doing this testing, I played it on my kitchen table on top of uh, the laptop cooler. Now, it was either off for the test that says without or it was on for the test that said it was on. Okay, and so it still had a lot of really good airflow with it off. A lot better than what it would if it was on your lap, on your bed, or, or whatever. You're going to burn it up if you do that. It really needs to be elevated. Um, <clears throat> would I buy it again? Nope. Probably not. Uh, I would look somewhere else, no one I know. But, that being said, though, if they could fix the thermal solution on it, I think it would be a fantastic machine and so it's really up to you you all if you're watching this video and you're like you know i think i'm gonna buy this just know that the thermal solution isn't what it needs to be <clears throat> there's tons of videos online about how to change uh the thermal paste and things like that and we may look at that on this channel we may look at changing the thermal paste and seeing how well they did compared to how well we can do um <clears throat> but that being said, though, um, to catch it on sale, which is what I did on Black Friday, I caught it on sale. I got it for a really good price. It was worth the price of what I paid for it, uh, which I think was around $1,200. I would say it's worth that. It's not worth what it retails for. But if you want a great machine and you do catch it on sale, it's worth it. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more things coming up. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, I'm going to do some tests with uh, a Ryzen 5 3400G that probably shouldn't be done on a Ryzen 5 3400G, but we're going to take a look at some, some pretty neat things, uh, some questions that I want answers to, and you all might like it as well. So if you like this video, hit like. If you don't like it, don't like it. Um, if you want to leave a comment, that's great. I reply to all of my comments. I enjoy talking to everyone on here, um, so I reply to them. And if you want to subscribe and stay tuned for some really cool things that we're going to do in the future, subscribe. Listen, I hope you all have a great day.